What's up everyone? My name is Nate, I'm with Tiny Hilltop Food Forest. Today I want to show you the method I use to bend poles for my hoop house. I'm currently in the middle of building 60 feet worth of hoop house, so I've bent quite a few hoops now at this point, and I just wanted to share the method that works best for me. The first thing I did was I tried to find the correct hoop bender for what I was doing. They have six foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 24 foot. I think they have a couple more in, between, in there somewhere, but I'm using a 12 footer because I'm making 12 foot wide hoop houses. So I took that, that hoop bender and I mounted it to my deck and I built a guide system using one by fours, some scrap one by four. You do want to give yourself some space. You want about an eight foot, a four foot by eight foot area, about the size of a plywood or OSB sheathing to maneuver the 10 foot poles. The first thing I do is measure nine inches on the male end of the pole. I've seen some people say six inches, 12 inches. Really all that does is it determines how wide and how tall your hoop house is gonna be. Nine inches I found works pretty well with 12 foot. Once you have your nine inch mark, you wanna insert the, the pole into the pole bender. You wanna make sure that your nine inch mark is at the end of your pole bender. Once you have that lined up, you're ready to make your first bend. The first bend is the easiest because you have the most leverage, but it's also very easy to over bend and cause a kink. You wanna just make sure that you're bending it just along the curvature of the pole bender. And what I do a little bit differently than I found most people do is when I get to this stage, most people have an extender that they put on the end and then they keep bending. But what I do is I, I measure nine inches from the female end and I flip it around and repeat the same process. I do it this way because I feel it allows me a more uniform bend than adding an extender. I feel like I lose control with that. So that's how I bend them. I like to have nine inches on both sides because it allows a little, almost like a straight top on my hoops. That allows me to use a one by four treated as a ridge beam. I'll show you a couple runs through at normal speed just so you get an idea of how I do it and the time it takes.
I want to show you real quickly what I mean on the first bend. The first few I did, I really hulked them and I bent it way too much. I think it's 17 gauge steel, so it's a lot easier to bend than you would imagine. But I think just going into it, I, I worked up my mind that I had to bend fence posts, so I got all hulked up and I just I went way too far on the first couple and I had a little it, it bent off the pole bender so I had a little kink I had to work out. So this is what I mean. You want to get to about right here and you'll see you're pretty flush with the end of the pole bender and it's very easy to keep going but that'll cause a kink. So you want to bend it there and then move on and bend it again. That's how I bend poles for my hoop houses. I'm by no means an expert, but I just wanted to share what works for me because I think it's a little more intimidating um, when you start to look into it than it is once you actually do it. As long as you're uniform and, and do the same thing each time, you'll end up with, uh, with rounded hoops. Thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate it. I'm creating a little food forest, micro farm kind of a thing. So if you want to hang out while I do that, That'd be cool. Thanks again. Take it easy. Grow stuff.